Mountain. Hi, I'm Calvin Hastings, and I want to invite you to Campers Inn in Kings Mountain this Saturday, July 4th, for the Keys to Freedom Independence Weekend Sale. We'll be there broadcasting live from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We'll have All-American hot dogs, chips, and soft drinks, plus register to win some great prizes, including Atlanta Braves baseball tickets. And wear your red, white, and blue colors, and you'll have a chance to win a parts and accessory gift card valued at $1,000. That's right, $1,000. So put on your red, white, and blue, and come on over this Saturday, July 4th. Hit the road with Campers Inn in Kings Mountain. Located on Highway 161 South at I-85. Campers Inn in Kings Mountain, making memories that will last a lifetime. Get your prescriptions to go from Medical Center Pharmacy in Cherryville. Yes, delivery is available. Look for the Medical Center delivery van in your area. Just call 704-435-3263 for your prescriptions to go. You can even order online. Just go to mcpcherryville.com. Check out their new and improved website, or you can drop by the store and visit them on East Academy Street. That's Medical Center Pharmacy of Cherryville on the go for you, celebrating 50 years of service. For over 100 years, the Stamey Tysinger Funeral Home in Falston has been providing services to families of our community with care and compassion. And now the Stamey Funeral Home has added the Cremation Center along with a new name, the Stamey Tysinger Funeral Home and Cremation Center. The Stamey Tysinger Funeral Home and Cremation Center on Highway 182 in Falston and the Stamey Funeral Home in Cherryville, located on Dixie Street in Cherryville, serving you with care and compassion in your time of need. Well, it looks like this 4th of July Eve is going to feature quite a bit of cloud cover and a really good chance of showers and storms, especially this afternoon and this evening. Uh, the air mass is so moist, though, that we can't rule out showers even during the morning hours. High temperatures in the middle 80s. The thunderstorms diminish tonight, lows in the upper 60s. Saturday, still mostly cloudy and another chance of scattered thunderstorms, but I think the activity will be less widespread tomorrow than it will be today. Highs in the upper 80s. I'm Greg Fischel in the Weather Center. Currently at the Big Old Country Studios, it's 10.07 and the temperature is 72 degrees. Rocket into summer with great deals from Dodge at Abernathy Chrysler Jeep Dodge in Lincoln. Build passion and performance with a new 2015 Dodge Dart. MRSP starting at $16,495. Hey, it's vacation time. See America's best-selling minivan, the new 2015 Dodge Caravan. MRSP starting at $21,795. Test drive one today at Abernathy Chrysler Jeep Dodge, 1442 East Main Street in Lincoln. It's time to jump in. Yes, pool time is here in Carolina Hardware Garden Center and Pool Center on the Reapsville Road in Lincoln is ready for you and your pool. Keep it clean with BioGuard chemicals. Plus, check out the all-new outdoor patio furniture along with pool accessories including hats and pullovers. Also, pool toys and games. Pool fun starts at Carolina Hardware, 969 Reapsville Road in Lincoln, your pool care headquarters. Bud Light presents Real Men of Genius. Real Men of Genius. Today we salute you, Mr. Blue Aluminum Bottle Maker. Mr. Blue Aluminum Bottle Maker. Your amazing creation allows us to keep our beer, our hands, and the Arctic ice shelf completely cool. It's really, really cold. The only problem we have taking a drink Removing our lips from the bottle after taking a drink. My lips are stuck. Sure, we need a beer this cold. Should we ever find ourselves running wind sprints at the bottom of an active volcano? I'm on fire! So crack open an ice cold Bud Light, oh fryer of the frigid. Now, can somebody please pry this bottle from my frozen hand? Mr. Blue Lemon Bottle Man. Bud Light Beer, Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. Distributed by Fox Distributing, Shelby. Hello on this Friday, July 3rd, 2015. 
time for a special Community Profile program. It's the Elder Law Report. Greg McIntyre is here. Good morning to you, Greg. And morning, Milton. You have a guest with you as well today. I do. I have Hayden Soloway, who works with our office doing various things, uh, who knows everybody, I think. Hayden's come with us today just to... Uh, to interact and uh, she has some questions for me I think and uh, you know this is really Milton this is elder talk radio okay for the next mm-hmm. 30 minutes we really want to put out some some great information in the community uh, stir some response we want to answer questions and we'd love for people to call in Milton if people need to call in and ask mm-hmm. us some questions where can they call in all right yes our regular phone lines are 704-482-1390 or 704-435-2844, regular phone lines that we use for swap shop and contest and et cetera. You can call to talk to, to Greg here today. Call with your questions, and we'll try to field those questions, okay? And anyone who calls in, um, also with the code word radio, Milton, we're going to give them a free consultation in our office. We'll talk to them about how to protect their assets and legacies. I'm Greg McIntyre, folks, with McIntyre Elder Law. Uh, helping seniors protect their assets and legacies. And uh, we're talking about Independence Day today. Milton, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow. Oh, okay. Let me get my microphone on. Tomorrow, the 4th of July. Independence Day, right? Yes. Right? And uh, Hayden, how many years, ha- what's, what birthday is it of this country? What, how many years have we been independent? 239. 239. 239 years, that's correct. So uh, that's, I mean, that seems like a long time, right? Uh-huh. I mean, comparatively, as long the as any other democracy has lasted, I think. You think so? I mean, yeah. compar- comparatively, though, there's a lot of a lot of older countries out there, right? So we're just kind of we're not seniors yet as countries. We're we're kind of we're still babies, right? We're trying to get it right. Um, so uh, you know, what do we do on Independence Day? We hang flags, eat hot dogs and hamburgers. Shoot off fireworks. We wear, Are you wearing red, white, and blue tomorrow? Oh, yes. Okay. I've got my flag on today. I'm a veteran, so I wear my flag every day. Okay? Uh, do you know, did you know that mo- a lot of the flags and fireworks that we shoot off in this country are actually imported from China? Do you know that? No. All right. So in 2013, Milton, we spent $204 million in fireworks that were imported from China. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, to like, celebrate I don't like that. Yeah, to celebrate America. We spent uh, $3.5 million in those little U.S. flags mm-hmm. imported from China. Mm-hmm. That's not a good thing, is it? We need to be making that stuff here. What do you think, Hayden? I agree. We I've ne- invested a lot of money in China in flags. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we've spent a lot of money over there in fl- American flags. So, uh, so they're profiting from democracy as well, I guess, though, right? From our independence. Yeah. Our tax money. All right, so Nathan's Hot Dogs has a hot dog eating contest every year on July 4th, okay? It's a 10-minute hot dog eating contest. How many hot dogs can you eat in 10 minutes, Milton? Mm, I'd be full after about three. Three (laughs) hot dogs? Guess how many is the record holder for their contest? How many hot dogs in 10 minutes? Oh, my goodness. I'll say 70. All right, that's that's, that's a pretty good guess. What do you think, Hayden? I don't think it's that much. You don't think it's that much? It's 69. No. That's amazing. We did not, t- for the listeners out there, we did not tell Milton that ahead of time. Milton, you couldn't eat 70 hot dogs in 10 minutes? Not not in 10 days. I think we need to go, we need to go to enter the Nathan's Hot Dog Contest. Yeah. Um, so, so, okay. Uh, you know, what does independence mean to you, though, as a mm. senior? Um, Hayden, what does independence mean to you as a senior? Well, financial security personal security, um, security for my children and grandchildren. Those are the things that, those are the things that are most important to me. And so not, in, not in that order. They all link together. It's wanting um, what I have had for my grandchildren, and those are the ways I can get it. Okay. So so financial security for yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, I want, I want it so that I can give some to them. So you want to be able so to wanna, give something have, yeah. to them as well. Yes. All right. I'm very uh, conscious of that. And, and I've, I've found, you know, this is my personal belief as well, you know, not only a senior, we want to stay in control of our assets. I say that the kids are a lot nicer to mama if she still is in control of the house and everything else, okay? 
Um, and that's that's kind of our goal when we do planning is to keep the senior totally in control of their assets mm -hmm. while also protecting those assets against any uh, possible things that could hamper their independence there, that could hamper their control of their assets, such as healthcare situations. Do you know how many, speaking of Independence Day in governments, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in 2005 came out with a report on seniors and long-term care. Long-term care being assisted living care, nursing home care, even in-home care. If, if we had 10 people in the room right now, how many of those would need care during their life if they're over 65 in 2005? Well, I know that answer because this is something we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. But Milton, how many you. people do you think? Okay, so 10, 10 people over 65 in That's the right. room right now. How many would need long-term health care? Is that what you say? Long-term care. Correct. Uh, I'd say of those 10, eight. Okay, it's a, that's, a, that's a good guess. It's actually seven. Milton's mm -hmm. a very a very good guesser today. So, <laughs> so seven out of 10 people, there's a 70% chance that you'll need some type of long-term care if you're over 65, according mm -hmm. to that report. And that's, I mean, that's a, that's, uh, those are big odds. So, so you need to plan for those. Mm -hmm. So when we sit down with a senior and we do planning, we talk about, all right, knowing that's an issue, how do we prevent, uh, you know, that cost from taking your house, from, from preventing you from giving your house to your, to your, uh, to your children, to your grandchildren? And talking about the system we have right now set up, um, why, did we, why did we go independent as a country, Hayden? Why do you think? Well, the taxation without representation was the motto, but okay. it was, it was uh, wanting government the way we wanted. We wanted to control ourselves and we wanted to be self-governing. Okay, mm -hmm. so we wanted, to gov we wanted to be in control, right? Mm -hmm. You pay for a house for how many years during your life? 20, 30. Maybe more. 20, 20 30, 40, house, house. Yeah. 50, 60, house. depending on if you own mo multiple houses. Mm -hmm. You could have equity lines. Mm -hmm. And do you pay the bank exactly what that house is worth, or do you pay them, you pay well, them interest? Sometimes triple what it's worth. You pay them two to three times yeah. what it's worth, right? Mm -hmm. And then you pay taxes all along, correct? So you're taxed. And taxed. And we have representation, right? Right, I guess? Mm -hmm. Well, we're competing with the lobbyists and the special interests. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, somewhat. Yes. Okay, we have a caller on the line. Caller. Yep. We do have a caller on line one. Good morning. Good morning. Hi there. This is Patsy. Uh, I have a neighbor that has a fence up, and it's all grown up in three different kinds of bushes, weeds, and everything. I can't see to get out of my driveway, but... It is not on the right of way. If I get hurt, can I sue that person? <laughs> That's a very good question. Okay, um, you know, we 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 sue everybody now. It seems like okay. Yeah, we do. Um, so so you said it's not on a right of way, or is it on their property? There's there's a good question. Is it on the other yes, person's property? It, it's on their property. You know, I think that sounds like a safety hazard or concern that needs to be addressed with that neighbor, don't you? Yes. Before there's an accident or a liability or somebody getting sued, what do you think? I think we need to. You know, those, those are those are uh, issues. Uh, you know, I consider that even a smaller issue. I mean, it could be a great health concern, but yeah, you know, that's why that's what we'd sit down and talk about. Let's sit down and talk about it. See if we need to write that neighbor a, a, a stern letter uh, to motivate them to move prior to actually you know taking them to court or, or making them. Uh, uh, do what they need to do so that your property is safe, and so is theirs, you know? Um, yeah. Those are certainly safety concerns that the community, your representatives, and the attorneys in the area, I think, are concerned about. So, you know, call call uh, call uh, an attorney who deals with that. Could be a property law attorney. Could be an elder law attorney. I'm the elder law guy, Greg McIntyre. You can feel free to call our office, 704 Two five nine seven zero four zero. Use the code word radio. I'll sit down and talk to you about it for free. Okay, um, and give okay, you a free consultation. Okay, tell me that number again. Seven zero four. Uh huh. Two five nine. Two five nine. Seven zero four zero. Do you know where we're located uptown? No. It's as easy as one two three West Marion Street. Okay, one two three West Marion. Right. All right. Okay. 
farmer's market. Right Let's across see. from the new farmer's market canopy building. Or it's the, they, we can't call it the farmer's market. It's the, I think it's the community community market community center or something okay. like event center we'll get the name right. all right but it is mainly okay. the farmer's market isn't it? and, so, the, and yeah. now patsy okay. that's that's shelby patsy that's in yeah shelby. okay yeah yeah but, i know where uh, that is all right hey hayden do i just have clients in shelby no, no i have clients there. all over yeah. last friday morning i was in burke county meeting with with someone in their home so you know okay. i consider i'm an attorney in north carolina mm-hmm. so uh you know i can i can travel all over and i and i how many how many do you have any children patsy uh one at home one at home okay good deal i, I got six at home right now so daddy's got to work bless okay so i don't mind uh, making time for you oh by it's one, <laughs> wife. by one by Just one baby mama that's correct by one wife yes by one wife I, you know congratulations oddly <laughs> enough and uh um but yeah well thank you they are a blessing they're a blessing mm. so but anyway, thank you for calling in, Patsy. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope thank I've you given you some much. direction, and I'd be glad to meet with you and talk with you personally later, okay? Okay. okay. Right. Thank you. All right. All right. And, Greg, if you want to take another call right now, or if you had something else you want to cover, we do have somebody standing by. I'd be glad to take we'll another call. Go ahead call. and take another caller here. Okay. Caller, you are on the air. Okay. When an elder is in a nursing home, do they have to cash in their life insurance? To pay for the nursing home? That is an extremely good question. Number one, what's your name? What's your first name? Glenda. Glenda. Glenda, it's Greg. Greg McIntyre. Good. The elder law guy. Good to talk to you, okay? Um, mm-hmm. so, so, yeah, do they have to cash in life insurance? Well, you know, number one, when you sit down, when I sit down with someone, I'm going to look at all those concerns, okay, if someone's in a nursing home, all right? Um, many times people get in nursing homes, it could cost anywhere between, what, forty to eighty thousand dollars seventy eight thousand dollars is the national average so it better be a big life insurance policy per if you're talking what's that per year per year that's per year yes per year we pay cost. eight thousand per month eight wow that's 90 you're testing my math skills ninety six thousand dollars a year correct mm-hmm. and probably yes. pay other incidental costs like you know uh other just there are other costs that you pay out also uh just to provide for that senior correct Right. Yeah. So, so you're talking about probably over a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's, I mean, that could spin down even a very large savings and retirement estate very quickly. To your point, on the life insurance policy, number one, I'd want to ask: Is it a term life policy or is it a whole life policy? I don't know. You'd need to check that. Okay. Term okay. life policies are for a specific term of years. For instance, I'm uh, in my situation with six kids and a wife. I'm able to get term life much cheaper than I can get whole life for a term of, say, you know, 20 years. And if you're a Dave Ramsey follower or something like that, you know, he's going to always push you toward term life insurance instead of whole life. Whole life is an investment. You're going to accumulate part of that monthly payment um, so you, you can come back and withdraw money or it has cash value. What you do is you look on that statement and it's going to tell you, tell you the current cash value for that statement, okay? Um, yeah. or for that policy, all right? So it is a countable asset, okay? And you can uh-huh. cash it in to pay for nursing home care, all right? Another thing that I would be looking at, and you don't have to tell me over the phone, but just so that I plant these seeds with you, is you need to look at what is uh, uh, the overall strategy for paying for that care for that, you know, for, for how many years, okay? Um, and, and how much is that gonna cost you, all right? Um, and, and is, is, is the life insurance part of the strategy? Is there four, are there 401ks, retirement pensions? Is it, is that person a veteran? Was that person's spouse a veteran? Cause that could equal up to 2750 per month. Were they both veterans in VA aid and attendance, uh, that could help out with those payments. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. you know, or is it a situation where we're looking at a Medicaid spend down down the road to come in or, or even now to pay for long-term care? And, and how much can we save that mom or dad paid for their entire life to save? Um, is there a healthy spouse? Is there some, you know, is that spouse of that person still alive and healthy? Can we, can we move assets there under the law and under the rules to save those assets? What I did is went through a really quick evaluation and troubleshooting matrix of logically how I sit down with a client and look at an emergency uh, or crisis situation like that, okay? Again, you call my office, code name radio. Be glad to meet with you, 704-259-7040, and we can talk about that a little more in depth and get into the specifics of that situation, okay? 704-259-what? 7040. 
seven zero four zero. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a great yeah. day. All right, Greg. Uh, let's see. We have another caller. Sure. Ready to take that uh, one, another caller here. And uh, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Milton. How are you doing? And how's Greg doing this morning? Oh, we're good. We're good. I, I, Very I'm, good. Doing, I'm doing wonderfully. Who am I speaking with this morning? This, this is Tim in Kings Mountain. I heard you uh, on there last week, and I'm glad you got back on there. I had a couple questions, and I got your address now, and I do want to come up there. But the question I had for you sure. is uh, my dad is – we pretty much got the all, all the – Nooks and crannies taken care of, we think. Right. But when everything's said and done, you always find out something that you didn't realize or didn't actually know at that, the time. That's, that's why you're calling in today, so you can find out what you don't know. So you can you don't it, know what you don't know, right? So let's let's talk about that. That's it. Well, the guy that I call my dad, he's really not my dad. No biologically kin whatsoever. Sure. But he's pretty much been in my life all my life. And he does have other family and everything. And he did go make a will and pretty much set up all the banks and everything else into my name. Mm -hmm. And he was wondering, after everything, if when he's dead and gone, that if his family could come in there or the government could come in there and put a hold on anything that he has that is left to me, and me not be no biological kin to him. Right. Wow, that's that's a, such a great question. And and what was your first name? Sorry about that. My name's Tim. 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 All right, Tim. That's such a great question. Okay. So so yes, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna always, you know, I've sat down with several people recently, and and they had to do no probate work. They didn't have to open anything up for liens at the courthouse and probate the will, because we already had it set up correctly ahead of time sounds like that's something like the situation that you're in, okay? Um, but, but uh, you know, certainly joint ownership with rights to survivorship on the bank accounts, you have to do that with someone you trust very, very deeply. Um, and, but, you know, that would avoid having that money have to go through probate. Uh, it would just automatically be the other person's. Uh, is it subject to a governmental lien? I'd have to know more. Is the home protected by using certain protective deeds like ladybird deeds? Is there rental property? Is that property protected under the law using certain tools like tenants in common deeds? Um, and there's other strategies to use there in property protection under the law so that the government can't come in and place a lien on your property and take it away should you pass away or should your spouse pass away, okay? Um, as yeah. you know, according to the last caller, she's spending upwards of $100,000 per month in cost. I mean, you know, that could spin down the estate, so there's nothing left in the bank account, um, uh, you know, at all. But, but, you know, under the current Medicaid rules, how about this, for long-term care Medicaid, okay, if there's no long-term care insurance policy, uh, which I would recommend if you can afford it, and there's other hybrid products, talk to, your, talk to somebody who's very knowledgeable in those products. But, uh, um, you know, $119,220 this year. Uh, can be kept for a healthy spouse. Not a lot. We can help save more. Um, but for a single person, do you know the limit you have to spend down to if you're in a long-term care Medicaid situation? No. $2,000. And then if, okay. if, if once you spend down, are they going to place a lien on real estate or try to come back and collect that in probate? Medicaid? The government? What you're calling the government, I think. Uh, yeah. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. I mean, how many people out there know someone themselves, you know, that their, you know, their parents or, or friends, you know, have had their homes taken away because of that same situation? And that's what I'm saying isn't right on this Independence Day. You know, we, we started the country for freedom from taxation, freedom from tyranny. And right now we're paying three to four times as much as it costs for a house to the bank. And then you pay your taxes on top of that. And then, uh, you know, in the end, everything you save for in retirement spent down at $100,000 plus per year on a nursing home or, or assisted living facility. And it's not your fault that you have that health care situation generally. And, uh, and then the home's taken away that you paid so much for in the end. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, just, that's, that, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's our system, man. Uh, you know, so 
And that's, that's what my dad is looking at. My dad right. says, you know, I heard you the same day that you was on there about the Ladybird Law, and I'm like, well, Lady I didn't get D. the number. And I said, hopefully I'll hear him back on there. And he called me a few minutes ago, and I said, well, I'm going to call in if they let people call in. But that that's what he's worried about. Hey, Tim, and you he, have my number now? To, you have my phone number now? I, I wrote it down whenever you gave it to the other lady. So I will be calling you, and we will be coming up there. Hey, you want to read about Ladybird D's? Uh, head to my website, mcelderlaw.com. You can listen to, okay. you can watch videos on it. You can listen to a podcast or Elder Talk Radio that I do on there as well. Uh, follow me okay. on social media. Sign up for my newsletter on the website, and you'll get all the updates and changes in the law. Okay. Well, I do appreciate that, Greg. And tune in every Friday morning at ten o'clock. All right. Thanks, Tim. Oh, all right. Thank you, and have a great evening. Yes, sir. All right, Greg, and uh, another. We have another. We can. I mean, it's up to you, man. Okay. You yeah. tell me how we are on time. Yeah. Oh, I'm, we're, I'm we're, looking at we got time. about ten minutes. Oh, cool, oh, cool. Oh, and so Absolutely, we'll take another we call. We got another caller. Then, uh, good morning, caller. Go right ahead. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing? Hey, this is Greg, the elder law guy, McIntyre, and uh, wanted to ask your first name, sir. Uh, Larry Trump. Oh, good to talk to you, sir. How can I help you? Nickname's LD. LD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. The one, I guess I'm only. Old the enough, one and only. I guess I'm old enough to be required a, a elderly, I guess. I got you. I got you. I mean, you know, we're all going to get there. If I'm lucky, I'll get there, you know? <laughs> I mean, this beats the alternative, right? Go over your feel, I guess. <laughs> so how can I help you, sir? I was checking, you know, like that Medicare you get when you get of age, you know, uh, Social Security. Right, right, and right. insurance, uh, that's 20%. You might not have to have it. And I just wonder if there's any better ways than what I've got. Yeah, so so you're currently drawing Social Security, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, there's a huge strategy there. I hate to ask any any person their age, but how old are you right now? I'm be 73, September the 4th. Well, congratulations, congratulations. 73. I hope, like I said, I hope I get there. You know, that's a great... Uh, uh, debate right now is whether to take Social Security at what, you know, in that range from 62 on up um, and when to take it and maximize it. You know, if you can hold out, you get your maximum maximum income. Um, and, uh, and, and sir, do you have any other other uh, health issues going on? Or, or are you are you a veteran, perhaps? No, sir. Sure. OK. And uh, well, let me let me tell you this, you know, um, you're drawing Social Security right now. OK. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and that's great. And what we want to do, do you? I hate to ask personal questions, but sometimes I have to know. Yeah. Is, is there a is there a piece of property that you that you that you own or would like to protect? Yes, my house and my. Uh, uh, there you go. There you go. So, so let's yeah. let's talk about that. You're you're drawing Social Security. You you own your own home, and uh, and I'm sure that you'd like to say what you want to do with that home if you pass. If you pass a, pass away 100 years from now, right? Or at least 30. <laughs> at least 30. That's right. But you'd <laughs> like to keep that property protected and say what happens to it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if you haven't done protective planning and, and used to, you had to beat a five-year look-back period, okay, yeah. for yeah. Medicaid purposes, for long-term care, nursing home, Medicaid. All right, to do a yes, life estate sir. deed or some kind of property transfer deed, but st- and especially to keep control of that property, a ladybird deed is the perfect tool for what you need. Okay, mm-hmm. ladybird deed uh, would allow you to stay in control, you and or your spouse, to stay in control of the property throughout your life. Okay, to the to the very end, a hundred years from now, right? Yes, and sir. Uh, and 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 then that automatically passes to your your kids or to who, to your church, whoever you need that property to go to to benefit the community or your family uh, once you pass away. Uh, and it beats that five year look back period for nursing home Medicaid if you run into that situation that seven out of ten seniors are going to run into. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey Milton, I appreciate you listening, and I thank yep. you so much for your call. Okay. LD. I'm sorry, LD. Did I say Milton? I'm Milton over LD. here. LD. I'm sorry, LD. Uh, Milton was looking at me. Uh, Mil- Milton scared me over here for a second. No, I'm just kidding. It LD, would, thank you know. for your call, man. Hey, it would scare you. All right. You have a good day. Thank you, LD. All right. See you, buddy. 
All right, that's LD. He's he's a very loyal loyal radio listener. We well, good, good. It. Yeah. Um. So so just to put out a quick disclaimer, you know, I'm a I'm a local attorney. I'm a North Carolina attorney. So I give only legal advice on North Carolina issues, and no attorney client bond or relationship is formed by anything I'm doing today. We're just having some nice conversations. We'd have to sit down together. He'd have to decide to retain me for me to actually be your attorney. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have another caller. Another caller? Mm-hmm. You guys are killing me over here. I love the calls. Thank you. Getting busy, yes. Uh, right. On line one. Uh, caller, what's your first name? Yeah, I'm Randy. Randy. Good to, good, yeah. to, good to hear from you, Randy. How, how can I help you? Good to hear you? from you, buddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, Thank you. Uh, this friend of mine, mother, passed away, and she had a will. It was cut and dry. Everything went to him, but he never did do nothing go to probate or nothing like that is that legal yeah you, the, you don't have to do probate there's nothing that I mean, says uh, you got to go probate a will in fact okay. in fact if you're going to set yourself up correctly and and i have articles that i've written uh go to mcelderlaw.com and look at our blog uh, mm-hmm. on on our wills obsolete okay and that's mm-hmm. the question i mean you know if you're passing things by will you're opening them up i mean wills do what they're supposed to do but you open them up uh, for probate, and you work, when you open an estate down at the courthouse, and you have to advertise it in, in the paper, and you and have you, to do that. You, well, if it's over what thirty thousand uh, dollars, twenty in some instances, thirties and thirty in others. If it's over that amount, then it can't be a small estate, and you have to wait ninety days and advertise it in the paper. If it's even a small estate, you have to wait ninety days. Okay, why do you wait ninety days and advertise it? Uh, I'm not sure. Do you think it's so that people can hey, say, hey, this person passed away. We want to send them money. We're going to mail that to the courthouse or mail that to the, you know, we're going to go take a bunch of money over there. You think that's the reason? Mm, it may sound so good. <laughs> I wish it was. Hey, man, if I pass away, please bring me a big bag of money, you know. <laughs> but, I, uh, I hope <laughs> but usually it's, it, it's for, uh, for liens. It's for somebody who wants a piece, who wants to get oh. paid so they can right. attach. What happens if you're passing your house through your will and a big lien gets attached, like a big health care lien or Medicaid lien? What happens to your house? Do you know? No, sir. It gets sold to pay that lien. It gets auctioned off or sold. Mm-hmm. If, it doesn't move, if it doesn't move in a certain period of time, they'll auction the thing off for a fraction of the value to pay that lien, right? We've, we've got so, that. so, you know, you want to protect yourself. We need to sit down and talk. 704-259-7040. Code word radio. Be glad to talk to you for free on that issue, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Randy. Thank you, Randy. Uh, yeah, we, I know personally somebody, uh, you know, in, in my hometown, Krause, where that's happening right now, there's an auction coming up for the person who passed away. To pay that, what? For the Medicaid to loan. To pay a Medicaid lien. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We're long-term care Medicaid. Many people, too, they get... They think, you know, Medicaid is, you know, food stamps or something like that. This is a totally separate system we're talking about, Milton. It's for, for seniors. It's long-term care Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Medicare will only pay for 20 days of care. Mm. Then your supplement would pick up for 80 days. Then you're looking at paying out of pocket, mm. like our previous caller, at 100000 a year mm-hmm. or more. Or having long-term care Medicaid come in and pay for assisted living or nursing home care. Greg, I've heard people, and we're got a couple of minutes we here. can talk for an hour uh, but no, we can go yeah. we can go over it doesn't matter um i've heard people say you know well they they gave everything to their child or something to to keep the you know government or whatever from getting or they sold it for a dollar to their son or whatever is is that legal and is that is that help is that the thing yeah to do you know in some um, cases you know that's that's traditionally what's been done either you use traditional life estate deeds or you just general warranty deed or quit claim deed you just give it away do you have to do it a certain period of time before that's right. before you go that's exactly okay. right so if you gave it away let's say you had a hundred thousand dollar house and you gave it to your son but two years from now there's a long-term ca- health care incident and there's just no money to pay for that long-term care at the rate of a hundred thousand a year okay mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like the previous caller um, in that case you'd have to go to long-term care medicaid to pay for say nursing home care but nursing home, I mean, Medicaid's going to say under the rules, look, you gave that house away within the five-year look-back period. Mm-hmm. you got to give it back so we can place a lien on it is one way or give us the value for that back or we're going to deny care for you, or money to pay for your care for a certain period of time. 
mm-hmm. at a hundred thousand dollars, probably going to be you know maybe a year or more. All right. So so you know that's an issue. That's a problem. What made you decide to do elder law? What made me decide to do elder law? I mean, I've always liked fight for the underdog. I've, I've, I've had a lot of courtroom experience. And I, told, I, I speak, I used to practice door law, everything that walks through the door, you know, because mm-hmm. I was young, I had kids. Um, and, you know, I had a grandfather that kind of went through this situation, you know, and, and, uh, and it was in assisted living care for 15 years until, it, until he passed away uh, at a very old age, by the way. Um, and, and, you know, I also had... Uh, uh, I th- that situation I said earlier, I, I, I do not think the system is set up correctly. I think the underdog right now is the middle class person who's worked all their lives, the heart and soul of America, to pay for everything they've gotten, and then everything gets taken away at the end because because the people with all that, that are setting up the nursing homes and the system, and 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 you know the entire system. How about that? There's some great nursing homes out there. I'm not. Uh, and, I, and I'm yeah, good friends with those and assisted living facility. And we work with those. We do. We're blessed with a lot of good ones. But I think the system's really set up, though, to take a lot of that back. And it costs a lot for health care. So how can I help that person mm-hmm. under the law and under the rules save the hard-earned money and property they work for their entire lives? Okay. That's why I do it. And I get mm-hmm. kind of kind of pumped up about it. <laughs> you know? Greg, uh, we have time for maybe one more caller here. Okay, sure. Care. All right. Go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, uh, how you doing today? Good, sir. Good. All right. Uh, I had a question for him. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, Ladybird Law, I know uh, you were talking so much about it, and I know normally there's a five-year wait until someone passes away. But the Ladybird Law you're talking about will, will have that kind of like as it starts off. It's already done passed over. About an average of what's a cost for something like that to have that uh that type thing done you know in your office or whatever an average cost I, i'm not saying the cost but uh <clears throat> yeah sure what's sure. an average you know, cost of say you know a home that's worth a hundred thousand dollars and and uh you want to pass it along to your kids uh and you know and you're getting up in age and uh so that's kind of like what you want to do so so you don't get in trouble because you want them to have what you had, you know. So could you give me some kind of an idea on that? Yes. Number one, yes, it beats the five. That's a great question. Number one, it beats the five-year look-back period, correct, for nursing home Medicaid or three-year look-back period for assisted living Medicaid. Those are two separate systems in North Carolina, okay? Yeah. Number two, I'm going to look at the value of the home along with other things that we're saving, okay, and we're protecting, okay, to, to accumulate a total figure of what we're going to charge, okay? But if you come in my office and, and you're just wanting to do a ladybird deed, it's going to range somewhere probably between the $250 and $750 range, somewhere in that range, okay? It's going to be somewhere uh-huh. in that ballpark, all right, just depending on what we're doing and how much we're saving. Let me ask you this. How much is your homeowner's insurance for a year? Uh, it averages around uh, – I believe it's five hundred and fifty some dollars a year. Okay, so you pay five hundred and fifty dollars not once, but every single year over ten years. Absolutely, every yeah. ten years that's fifty five hundred dollars. Correct. Right. Okay, so you're paying it, in, over twenty years. That's over ten thousand dollars. Let me right. ask you this: and This is it, a one time fee with you, right? That's a one time fee, baby. That's mm-hmm. correct. Right. So, so, so if you pay. Over three year, over thirty years, that's over fifteen thousand dollars. That's about sixteen thousand five hundred dollars you paid for homeowners insurance. If 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 there's a long term care situation for you or your wife, and and Medicaid is going to put a lien on that, so you can't pass it, and you because di- you didn't act in time. Um, right. Because ha- there's is a that, five year wait on that. It, well, let me ask you this: Is there is there a uh, is your homeowners insurance going to save that house? The answer is no. I don't think so. Not that's in correct. that respect. Yeah, that can't, that, that's no good, man. That only helps if right. you know something. The roof leaks or the house burns down or something, right? What yeah, I can right. do is better than any insurance policy you're ever going to get. I can tell you that 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 I can protect your home right now under the law, and I can beat the five-year look-back period. It's not a countable asset transfer. Okay. That's 
Okay. And I can do and it, it for a the fraction three, of the cost it, of you. Is it beat a three year too? Or oh, yeah. Does it, yeah. Do yeah, you have under, three years or do you have, I mean, what you do is it protects it from here on, right? That's correct. It's, it protects it under both systems. SA, which is called Special Assistance Medicaid, which is a three year look back period for assisted living, or Long Term Care Medicaid or Nursing Home Medicaid, which is a five year or 60 month look back period. Lady Bird Deed is allowable to not count as an asset, okay? Right. So we, we essentially, you know, that hey, if, you, if you're flying a stealth bomber and you're going into Iraq, can they see you? Right. No, they're, they're, you're not on their radar, okay? So it's not right. on their radar under the law. That's a great question. Right. Thank you for calling. Depends Thank on what so we're doing. Thank you so much for talking. You're welcome. Thanks. All right. Well, Greg, I guess we've just about uh, ran out of time here, a little over time, but that's no problem. But uh, I'll let you go ahead. You folks go ahead and wrap it up for Let this. Let me wrap it show. up for us. So we were talking about Independence Day. Hayden, thank you so much for being here today. It's my pleasure. Milton, thank you so much for letting us do it. Absolutely. I'm gonna. What are you doing for Independence Day, Milton? <laughs> out of here. You out of here? Where are you going? Beach. Beach in it? I'm going to the beach. I'm going to hang out. You, are you, you're working today, right? I'm, I'm fixing to be off for the next 10 days. Well, I'm going to tell you, in honor of hardworking Americans, we're working all day today. Okay. okay. You know what I call weekends? Well, uh, no, I have no idea. Work days in disguise. Okay. But I got six kids and daddy's got to hey, work. Okay. Gotta work. So call any, anybody who listens, call our office 704-259-7040 or call the radio station, code mm. word radio, and they'll give you our number. And we'll give you a free consultation, okay? Thank can, you for having us, Bill. Can they go ahead and call right now? Man, they can call right now. Okay. Julia's there to answer the call. Julia's Julie, Julie is at the office to answer right now. And, and Greg will be back next Friday. And I'll be back next Friday, 10 a.m. for Elder Talk Radio, okay? okay? Very good, folks. And we thank you for tuning in today. Happy 4th of July to everyone. We'll see you next week. Your summer companion. A lot of times we'll sit out on the deck in the summer and, and listen to the radio. Big old country. W-O-H-S-L-B. W-L-O-N Lincoln. W-C-S-S.